Hello and welcome in this session of Science Teaching Learning. In today's discussion, we are going to discuss about aims of Science Teaching Learning. As a science teacher, you must be aware that in India, science is having a very important place in our curriculum. Even our constitution also talks about developing scientific temper among the students, among the citizens of the country. And that is probably the only constitution in the world which talks about developing scientific temper among its citizens. It means that science and scientific temper, scientific values are the eternal part of our system. But how the aims of science teaching learning are being established? Let us discuss about it. But before discussing about it, let us discuss about the guiding principles for framing any curriculum or aims and objectives in any subject, which are discussed in National Curriculum Framework 2005, and these are five guiding principles. The first principle is connecting the knowledge to the life outside the school. Knowledge is not confined within the four walls of the classroom or within the boundary of the school. Rather, knowledge is everywhere. So let us give opportunity to our learners to explore the knowledge outside the boundaries of the classroom and outside the school. The second guiding principle is that let us ensure that learning shifts away from rote memory. It has been criticized for long that in traditional teaching learning, rote memorization of the facts, principles and theories have been emphasized even in science. But this is not science. So if we take a clue from the guiding principles for science teaching learning, we can say that science teaching learning should shifts away from rote memory or the methods which are promoting rote memory. There should be opportunities and activities which are enriching the curriculum so that it goes beyond the textbooks. So whatever is given in the textbooks is not only the knowledge, rather knowledge should be explored from the society, from the family, from the home, from the immediate environment and same is applicable on science too. The guiding principles of NCF 2005 also recommend that examinations should be more flexible and they should be integrated with the classroom life. So here NCF 2005 is basically talking about using assessment for learning and not assessment of learning. More emphasis should be given to use assessment techniques for promoting and facilitating learning. And the last fifth guiding principle of NCF 2005 is that it should nurture the overriding identity informed by caring concern within the democratic polity of the country. So whatever is being taught to the students, whatever opportunity is being given to our learners, they should nurture an overriding identity. Where? In the democratic polity of the country. So whatever the democratic principles of the country, they should be followed while we are using or developing any curriculum or any teaching learning method. So what we can do with the science? If we take clue from the guiding principles from National Curriculum Framework 2005, we can say that teaching of science should enable children to examine and analyze everyday experiences. Let them explore science around them. Whatever concerns and issues are there about the environment, science should emphasize on that. And it can be done by involving our students in a large number of activity like project, outside activities, etc. And it is being said that if we plan these activities consciously and effectively, such activities could lead for the knowledge generation. So what should be there in the science teaching learning? It is said that science teaching learning should be organized around the learner's experiences. Means whatever experiences they already have, whatever experiences they experience in their everyday life, science should be taught around these experiences. And opportunities should be given to our learners to explore the science around them. Let us ask them to explore the science in the kitchen to explore the science in the garden, to explore the science in the morning walk, to explore the science in the classroom, to explore the science in the playground, 
to explore the science in their daily activities. If we connect these with the science, science will become very interesting for them and they will start learning science and not memorizing scientific facts or principles. So if we do this, this will mark a clear shift from classroom and laboratory centered method, which is mainly considered as teaching learning in science. Another very important aspect of science teaching learning is that when we talk about science teaching learning, it should be integrated. Means the integration of different subjects. Generally, when we talk about science, people think that physics is a science, chemistry is a science, biology is a science, geology is a science, biochemistry is a science, botany is a science. So yes, these are the branches of science. But at the school level, science should not be segregated. It should not be compartmentalized. Rather, it should be integrated. And it has been suggested that at least up to secondary level, science should be taught as an integrated subject and not subjects like physics, chemistry should be introduced at the lower level. So how we can frame the criteria for science curriculum? If you see the National Curriculum Framework 2005, it is talking about six types of validity to ensure what should be there in the science curriculum. The first is cognitive validity. The another is content validity. The third one is process validity. Then the historical validity. Then the environmental validity. And last one is the ethical validity. Let us talk about all these one by one. Cognitive validity. What do you mean by cognitive validity? Cognitive validity means the content, the process, the language of the science, the pedagogical practices of the science should be appropriate as per the age of the learner. So what content in the science should go at the upper primary level? What content should go at the primary level? What content should go at the secondary level? What content should go at the senior secondary level? What kind of language should be there in the text and in the communication of the teacher and learner? What kind of pedagogical methods should be used? Everything should be decided by keeping in mind the age of the learner. And not only the age of the learner, but also all these should be within the cognitive reach of the child. So when we are saying it should be within the cognitive reach of the child, it means we are talking about their mental abilities. Second is the content validity. So what kind of content should be there? Whatever content you are presenting in your class, at whatever level you are teaching, you should provide the content which is significant and correct. Sometimes it is being said that let us simplify the content. So whenever we simplify the content or whenever we adapt the curriculum as per the cognitive level of the learner, as a science teacher, it is our responsibility that we must not so trivialized as to convey something basically flawed or meaningless. So in order to simplification of the content, we should not do anything which is wrong or which is meaningless. Process validity. When we talk about process validity, it said that engaging the learners in acquiring the methods and processes that leads to generation and validation of scientific knowledge. So focus should not be more on the facts, theories and principles, rather focus should be on acquiring those methods and processes which when they adopt, they will be able to generate the knowledge and they will be able to validate the scientific knowledge. So what is our responsibility? Our responsibility as a teacher is that we should nurture their natural curiosity and creativity in science. It is often said that when we talk about process validity, process validity is not talking about the processes involved in science, rather it talks about how to use science as a process. So learning to learn science should be the focus in our teaching learning. Next comes historical validity. Historical validity means whatever we are presenting in our science curriculum, whether it is historical perspective, historical facts, concepts, or the theories developed in the past, we should enable our learners to appreciate how concept of science have evolved with time. We should help the learners to view science 
as a social enterprise and to understand how social factors influence the development of science. Next is environmental validity. When we are talking about environmental validity, our focus is that science need to be placed in the wider context and perspective of learner's environment. When we talk about learner's environment, it includes both the local environment as well as the global environment. We should enable him or her to appreciate the issues at the interface of science, technology and society. And also, we should prepare our learners with the requisite knowledge and skills to enter in the world of work. Next is the ethical validity. When we say ethical validity, it requires that our curriculum in science should promote the values of honesty, objectivity, cooperation, freedom from fear, prejudice, etc. And it should also develop in the learner a concern for life and preservation of environment. So if as a science teacher, we are not able to develop such values, we are not able to design the activities which can promote these values, then we should be cautioned. So our responsibility is that whatever content we are presenting, whatever curriculum we are delivering, we should keep in mind all these validities. These validities basically are helping us in developing the general aims of science education. So what are the general aims of science education? In the National Focus Group report on National Curriculum Framework for Science, it has been suggested that science education should enable learner to know the facts and principles of science, its applications, consistent with the stage of cognitive development. What does it mean? It means that whatever facts or principles of science are being presented in the curriculum, they should be as per the mental abilities and mental level of our learners. Our learners should acquire the skills and understand the methods and processes that leads to generation and validation of scientific knowledge. So our focus should not be giving them certain facts and principles which they memorize. Rather, we should provide them, we should train them in the methods and process which they can use to generate and validate their own knowledge. Science education should develop a historical and developmental perspective of science and to enable our learners to view science as a social enterprise. And also it should relate to the environment. When we talk about environment, it includes natural environment, artifacts and people, local environment as well as global environment. And it should also help our learners to appreciate the issues at the interface of science, technology and society, that how science is helping in the development of technology, how science and technology are connected with the society, how they are fulfilling the needs of the society, how society demands and science gives some output. Then it is also being said in the same document that our learners should acquire the requisite theoretical knowledge and practical technical knowledge to enter in the world of work. So means science should give them the theoretical concepts as well as their practical technological implications and applications. It should develop the natural curiosity. It should nurture the aesthetic sense, creativity in science and science teaching learning technology. And science education should also invite the values of honesty, integrity, cooperation, concern for life and preservation of the environment. And it should cultivate the scientific temper objectivity, critical thinking, and freedom from fear and prejudice. So if you try to develop a link between the validity of science curriculum, six types of validity, and the general aims of science education, you can easily identify a relation that each aim has its root in one validity. We have already discussed about the aims of science teaching learning. Now this is the time to reflect upon different objectives of science teaching learning, which have been suggested in various documents, especially in National Curriculum Framework 2005 for different labels. When we talk about different labels, it means what should be the objectives of science teaching learning at primary level, what should be the objectives of science teaching learning at upper primary level, what should be the objectives of science teaching learning at secondary and senior secondary level. 
when we are going to discuss about the objectives of science teaching learning we should keep in our mind the six types of validity which we have discussed during the discussion on aims of science teaching learning and also the aims which have been derived from those validities so when we talk about primary level at primary level our focus should be to nurture the curiosity of child about the world around him or her means whatever we are going to teach should be related to the natural environment artifacts and the people we need to engage the child in exploratory and hands on activities to acquire the basic cognitive and psychometric skills through observation classification and inferences when we are talking about teaching learning of science at primary level our emphasis should be on the design and fabrication estimation and measurement as a prelude to development of technological and quantitative skills at later stage so what is our focus our focus is to develop the basic language skills also like speaking reading and writing and it should not be only for the science but it should be also through science so responsibility of development of basic language skills is not only on the language teacher but it is equally on the teacher who is teaching science so the focus at the lower primary level is basically on the developing basic process skills basic language skills and if you see the curriculum you will find that at primary level there is no subject like science in national curriculum framework 2005 rather they have proposed a integrated subject environmental studies which includes science and social science as an integrated discipline let us move towards the upper primary level so what we should do at upper primary level at upper primary level learners should be given the opportunity to explore science in their everyday experiences let us engage our learners in meaningful investigations prefer group activities because learners learn from one another we should focus on the problems which are significant and important according to them so the problems which they perceive are significant and important should be at the core of our teaching learning in science so when we are saying we should encourage the discussion between the teacher and peers it means that we should ask our learners to gather information from newspapers from knowledgeable person from their parents from their neighborhood and let them come with those resources let them discuss about those resources with the peers with the teachers and let us provide them opportunity for discussion as much as possible at upper primary level we can use activities like role play skit cooperative learning strategies like jigsaw and other techniques which should be adopted to ensure large participation and sharing of learning outcomes you can use biographical narratives of scientists and inventors how newton how einstein how apj abdul kalam has worked in his life so such famous biographies can be used at upper primary level your effort should be to continue for the development of process skills at this level also especially the basic process skills like observing measuring all such skills should be developed at upper primary level then the secondary stage at secondary stage our focus should remain as composite discipline so science can be taught as a composite discipline here we should not compartmentalize up to this level ncf also suggesting that let us provide them an opportunity to engage in the activities and analyze the issues surrounding the environment and health they should encourage to use systematic experimentation as a tool of discovery and verify the theoretical principles which they are learning or which they are being exposed in their classroom they should work on logically significant projects involving the science and technology the concept the principles the laws of science should be introduced at this level within the emphasis on comprehension and not on mere formal definitions and rote memorization at secondary level the concepts beyond direct experiences should also be introduced learner should make an understanding that all scientific phenomena are not directly observable 
Science also relies on inferences and interpretation many times. You should use experimentation as an important tool to discover and verify theoretical principles at this stage and organize co-curricular activities like some small group projects on local issues, use problem solving approach by giving them some problem, let them use scientific method to solve that problem. Then comes the higher secondary stage. So at higher secondary stage, the first thing is that we started compartmentalization. So for developing the conceptual competence among the learners and making them realize and appreciate the interface of physics, chemistry and biology with other disciplines. So how these subjects are connected with the other disciplines of the study. We should also expose our learners to different processes used in the industrial and technological application. So here focus shifts from basic process skills to advanced process skills. We should develop process skills and experimental, observational, manipulative, decision making and investigatory skills in our learners. So when we are going to develop higher order thinking skills, higher order experimental skills, observational skills, manipulative skills, decision making and investigatory skills, our learner will use these skills to analyze different problems, different situation and they will be able to use these processes for industrial and technological applications. At higher secondary level, we should promote problem solving abilities and creative thinking to develop the interest in the learners in the study of various disciplines. We should help our learners to understand the relationship between nature and matter on scientific basis. We should develop positive scientific attitude and we should appreciate the contribution of different science disciplines towards the improvement of the society, towards the improvement of the quality of life and the human welfare. How physics is contributing, how chemistry is contributing, how biology is contributing. Let our learners explore this, where they can find the application of physics, where they can find the application of chemistry, where they can find the application of biology. Let them explore. We should give them opportunity so that they can appreciate the contribution of different science disciplines towards the improvement of quality of life and human welfare. So if we should keep these objectives in our mind and when we will deliver in our classrooms, when we will facilitate the science teaching learning to our learners, we can do justice with them. So let us allow our learners to explore their world with a scientific eye. Thank you very much.